first I want to show you this humongous granola. This Fresnel lens captures about 1,700 square inches of sunlight and concentrates it down to the equivalent area. Now, if you look at my hand behind it, you can see that it doesn't really work well as a page magnifier. The magnification factor of this lens rated to these is very, very, very different. This would probably be the equivalent of 1.1 or 1.2, while this particular lens is 2 and the other one that I showed you is 4. So that proves that the magnification factor has nothing to do with it. This focal length on this particular lens would be one meter behind the lens. And if you've seen any of my other videos using large Fresnel lenses, you know that we're not working directly up under the lens. We're working a distance away from it. Now I'm going to show you that thing with the telescope and how a $15 telescope can get a closer image of the moon than a professionally made telescope mirror. So what I have here is a telescope made by Vivitar. This is one of those $15 or $20 things you pick up at Walgreens with a tripod and the whole works. It's actually pretty cool. You can come with a couple light pieces and you can actually see the moon pretty good, maybe a couple stars. You really can't see a lot more than that. But you're going to notice that it has a single lens on it that looks all the way down the entire tube. And this will actually focus light. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But anyways, this focuses light to one point that you pick up with the eyepiece. Now, why is this particular telescope more powerful in the terms of magnification than this big, beautiful telescope mirror? It has everything to do with the focal length on it. Now, you can see the focal length on this is probably 700, 800 millimeters. The focal length on this particular mirror is right there. It's about 500 millimeters. So if you were to use this as a telescope mirror, you would get a very clear picture of the sky, but not a very magnified picture of the moon. So in theory, you could take a small lens like this and make a super powered, super magnified telescope. The problem is small glass like this does not allow much light to come in. So just like our solar projects, the bigger the Fresnel lens is, or the bigger the mirror is, the more light that reaches your project at a focal point. Now for focusing, for the guys who like to look at the skies at night, that's very important. That's why when you see large telescopes, or you see big mirrors like this one, their size has everything to do with the amount of light that they let in. Now, this has a short focal length. If this was, say, a 3,000 millimeter telescope mirror, which would be the equivalent of three meters, instead of it having this deep curve shape, it would be a lot flatter. It would be almost flat. And some telescope mirrors that are really huge and magnify long distances, you can barely see the curve on them. The problem that you run into as far as optics with that is as you go bigger with the mirror and as you go further with the focal length, any little distortions can actually make a tremendous difference in what you see. You can go from seeing a crystal clear image to almost nothing just by even heat causing a mirror to get distorted. That's why they make these on, this is on a thick Pyrex glass on the back and you can see this is behind the glass. That's the mirrored surface behind it. This is also what's considered a first mirror, meaning that the uh, metal metallizing agent is actually there on the surface. So this is very delicate. Now this mirror, by the way, is an awesome, awesome sun collector. So the same thing is true for photography. Back in the day when 35 millimeter cameras used to have interchangeable lenses, a lot of them, digital cameras are having that now, but it used to be every camera that used 35 millimeter film, most of them anyways, had interchangeable lenses. And you used to be able to buy a really big telephoto lens for about 80 bucks. That was the equivalent of a 1200 millimeter lens. It would give you a zoom image that was a lot closer than lenses that look like this.
The difference in price between these two lenses was huge. The one lens was 70 or 80 bucks, the other lenses were between three to five to ten thousand dollars. Now, why do the professional photographers use this type of lens? Quite simply because of the amount of light that it lets into the film. So they can shoot sporting events at a higher speed and get those still action shots without using a flash and it enables them to basically get whatever they need. Now they can't zoom in as tight as you could with say the cheap lens, but you would never get a picture off of that cheap lens simply because the lens just does not allow enough light in. So